My name is Ron Von Blomberg. I'm a set decorator um, working out of New York. Um, my first question for you here is growing up, what did you want to be? Uh, that's a great question. Um, well, from an early age, I think I was kind of exposed to um, the industry. My family's kind of third generation. So that was, um, it was always part of my life. Um, I think the, um, uh, other than that, I think I wanted probably to be an architect. Yeah. And a veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you watched growing up that I mean, you said your third generation, like going into the industry, but is there anything that you watched growing up that particularly inspired you to, to go into it yourself? Um, you know, some folks have asked me that in the past, and I, there actually is one thing that actually really kind of set the tone is um, when I was a kid, I think I watched this, if you remember Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Yeah. When Rudolph and um, uh, Cornelius got trapped in the North Pole and they ended up in a little tiny cabin, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the during the blizzard. And when they opened that door and they went inside, something about that was like super magical to me. And I, I think it really clicked on what like, what a, a generated set would look like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even though that was in the puppeteer world, it was just something about that with, with force and, you know, force perspective and all that stuff was just fantastic. And I, and that's my earliest recognition of, of wanting to have an interest in the industry. How did you work your way up and get better at what you do? Well, I apprenticed for quite a bit. I, I started out actually studying with Lee Strasberg um, in acting and directing. And then uh, the change of that from going in front of the camera to behind was when he, he passed away. And I came back to New York uh, from Los Angeles uh, to work on commercials. And I apprenticed a lot. I just, you know, I I worked under a lot of uh, a lot of good designers and um, and followed through um, with that and and did from tabletop to uh, commercials and then to uh, movies and television. What would you say is the biggest challenge of being a set decorator versus the biggest reward of it for you? Um, the biggest challenge is to coordinate all the elements. Um, mm -hmm. To, to be you know to work cohesively with the designer and and the director and 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 everyone around and create you know a, a, a cohesive uh, direction for for all the work and get it all to come together it's kind of like a, like a recipe in, in, a, in a good uh, a dinner where you you know you want to make sure that everything is cooked and finished at the same time and you serve it you know it's similar to that in my opinion <laughs> If you could work with anyone in the industry, who would you want to work with? Is there anyone you aspire to work with in the future or anyone that you have worked with that you'd love to work with again? Hmm. Um, no one comes to mind right now. I think some of the people have since retired that I, I passed work with. Um, I've been in, in the industry for decades. Yeah. Um, but I would say, uh, you know, one that comes to my mind. I mean, everybody, I had great experiences with everyone. So it'd be nice to work with the people I've worked with in the past. This is kind of a difficult question for a lot of people because it's it's almost hard to describe yourself and think about yourself. But it, if you could describe yourself as a set decorator, what would you what would you say? Hmm, that is difficult, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, in terms of how I work or what I work as, um, how I describe myself. Um, Anything specifically you're thinking of or? Either is fine. I mean, just if, if somebody was like, what do you like? What is your process? What do you like? Do you know what I mean? Like describing yourself, like if, if you had like a bio on like exactly what you would want people to know about how you work, if that makes sense. I, I think I could I could um, associate with it, well, cooking a meal, I think. I, I think I I think all the elements. Um, I think it's it's first of all it, it's important to be kind. It's in, it, it's important to to work with people and listen. Um, yeah. And it's it's great to then you know pull all these things together with experience and and to grow a talent to to where you could then create that that meal so to speak. Where you you finalize the product, you know, on a plate. In our case, it's a set, 
And I think I, I think the magic of all doing that um, um, in, in our industry is just, you know, finalizing all that through 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 all the people that are all part of it, as they say, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I think that's, you know, that's sort of the key for me as you know, to being a set decorator that it's it's just, you know, I, I, I don't it, it's not me that's up on that in front of the camera, but it's my work that I create and my create, I hope reflects the character and the atmosphere that's that that basically brings the writer's words to the screen. So how has, how has being a set decorator impacted the way that you view media? Like, I, like when you watch things, how does that impact that for you? Okay, great question. Um, when I'm watching by myself, I absolutely analyze it to death. <laughs> difficult not to. Um, when I'm with other people watching something, I have to realize that I have, you know, unless they're in the industry, I have a different eye set. So okay. I, I remain quiet, but I definitely analyze things and I look at the big picture. And I think one of the things that um, you you sort of acquire with years of, of training is that, you know, you don't, you I sort of have a photographic memory. So I remember everything. So if I see something on a set, you know, I'll think of it and I'll remember it after and think about and analyze it at the end of the, at the end of a show. But um, yeah, I, I think I, I look at, I look at everything. So I, I do do that. It's, 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 it's a bit analytical. Some things I try to escape and, and lose myself in, but that doesn't always happen. Are there any set decorations that you've seen recently that have really stuck with you that you really enjoyed? Um, yeah, I have to say, um, I really, there's a lot of stuff on, uh, cable, like the crown. Um, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of good, a lot of period stuff is really nice. Um, yeah, I, I'm amazed that, you know, some of the work that comes out with television, it's because I know what it takes to, in the time that we don't have to create some great sets. So anyone that I, I totally respect and love all of the, um, period, uh, features and, 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 and series because I know what it takes to get that stuff done. But I said, there's nothing I dislike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually, I heard you talk a bit about how much work and research goes into period pieces. Could you could you talk to me a bit more about that? I, I know you've done period pieces before. What is that like for you versus working on more modernly set stuff? Um, well, as as of late, you know, that time has has changed. You know, we we don't have a lot of stuff is based with television. We don't have the luxury of of having a, the time on a feature film. Um, yeah. But but when we do have the time, um, you know, the Internet is such a great tool now. And, and, and we can really find things off the Internet in seconds and really pull together research um, and put together lots of lots of great influences. And, and, you know, I, you know, often create like Pinterest pages and stuff and it's, yeah. it works out really well just because it's, it's a quick, a quick board of, of what you want to represent or what you want to see. And it's, um, you know, usually, uh, usually the, 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 the process, I think, you know, it, it, back in the day, you know, we used to you know, go to libraries and, and, and pull out, you know, some, some old, old text and find th things differently, you know, so the internet is a great tool. And, and with that, it really brings us to, to, uh, to research, you know, at our fingertips. That reminds me, I know you mentioned earlier, just like how long you've been in the business and how long you've been doing that. And just with the element of the internet and, and all that, how has being a set decorator changed for you over the years? Is there is there parts of that change that you really enjoy or parts that you don't like the change with that? Um, good, great question. I, I think the changes in my opinion, um, they're a little, they're, they're great in the sense of the internet, but um, I think the, the level of in, in, in the intensity of, in, in, of immediate responses uh, puts us a little bit, you know, uh, you know, it, it's more difficult to to come out with things because people expect, you know, if they if they get if they get a um, um, if, if they get information to you, they expect that information to come back just as fast as the question, and yeah. and you know, back you know early in the earlier days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I sound kind of old when I say that, but you know, 
having that time uh, to research and, um, and, and, and what we have at our fingertips, it's really, it's really, really changed. Um, it's, it, it's, I think mostly for the better. Uh, mm -hmm. It's mostly for the better because, you know, we could have people stay in an office and work and be just as successful as going out and hitting the pavement, you know, and, and finding things that, that pull together our sets. Mm -hmm. You said that taking chance was actually one of your favorites and that you felt that you were most involved with emotionally. Is that still the case for you or is anything else sort of similar to that since then? I have to say, no, I think taking chances is, is still in that world. Um, again, like I said, the industry has changed and doing features has gone through doing television and, you know, and, and, um, a lot of the producers and don't want to spend the time, um, you know, just because of money, I suspect, and, and taking that time and following through, I mean, um, and, and getting the, that kind of, um, that product on the screen, uh, it's a little different. Certainly the jobs that I've been hired for lately, it's, 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 you know, it's a lot different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that taking chance was an amazing process. And, um, you know, I still have the same emotional reaction when I watch it, you know, however, you know, many times I watch it. <laughs> well, what, it was great. what was it about working on that, that that stuck with you? I heard you talk a bit about it, but is there anything that you can specifically remember? Like, I don't know, like memories or moments that really stick out to you from your time working on that? Sure. Um, I remember we had access to um, the, uh, oh, I, I forget what it's called exactly, but it's where we did the research for the um, soldiers that are brought back in the mortuary, I think in Delaware, the Air Force ba uh, base. And um, we, we were toured through there for our research so we could recreate a lot of those sets that that pertaining to the burial process of a soldier yeah. and as we were bringing um as they were bringing us through uh, the 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 building we passed the lounge area and on the lounge area they had uh uh, uh chairs for family members that were coming to visit their loved ones mm -hmm. and on those chairs they had, had their names for each of the soldiers that were on the chairs that you know the soldiers that were killed during uh the Iraq war and all that stuff, the yeah. conflicts. And that to me was um, a strong influence of, of the emotional part of, of doing the sets and the sensitivity of, of, of all that during that, those scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What sort of goes into your process um, similarly to what you just said about like, like working with stuff that's more in hinder with like real life and like real life situations and real life stories what what goes into your process for set decoration when you're when you're telling real stories that have real people well we try to recreate as much we try to glean as much information as we can from uh, the sources whether it's the writer or sometimes if it's based on a real person um you know the research could be based on that and we want to bring together you know visually um what we can what what they want us to do in terms of of the reality of it or a fantasy of it. You know, if they want a fantasy of something, you know, we could, we could also change that. So it's a process of just, you know, digesting all those things together and, and, and creating, you know, whatever, you know, they truly want. Mm -hmm. you know? Is there a certain genre that you really like to create? Um, I kind of like to do it all. I, I like the variety of it. You know, like I remember doing um, Bride Wars and a Warrior back to back. Yeah. You know, which was interesting. Um, I enjoy the the period films. Um, you know, sci in New York, we don't do a lot of sci-fi, you know, fantasy stuff. Um, you know, we do a lot of cop things. <laughs> a lot of reality, a lot of cop, a lot of based on, you know, current events. Mm -hmm. um, but I, 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 I like to do... I like to do creative, a uh, creative, uh, anything creative and on the world of, um, you know, just, you know, yeah, whatever, whatever we can do, we, we do it. Yeah. We I like it all. I, I like all the work you've done. I was like, you have such a long, long list of so many different things. Um, I heard you say that you 
that like you want to see more when things are happy and this this ties in with with genre like more when things are happy less when things are suspenseful can you talk to me a bit more about this and just more about how you evoke and create emotion through your set decoration hey, which interview was that i'm trying to remember was that uh it was it was one for it was one for a radio oh uh, okay i'm trying to remember what i said but <laughs> I think I know I know what that is, and that that's absolutely true. It's I I prefer, I prefer I mean, I prefer sets and and stories that have less violence. Mm -hmm. Like I prefer a love story than I than than someone getting shot, even though it's all fake and <clears throat> make believe. But I think the energy on the sets are much better um, when we're doing a love story or just. A true life story that doesn't involve violence um, and guns and that kind of thing. Um, unfortunately, it's the way of the world and what's what people want to watch. But you know, but it, it's hard to kind of compartmentalize that. You know, when you're you're trying to do a victim's home that's been shot, but it's it's you know, I, I prefer to do to do more of a, of a of a happy end side or a fantasy side of of that. Um, it seems more creative. And I think it also, the set, you know, uh, the, the folks on the set are also, I think, respond to that. And I feel it's just a universal energy thing. You know, I just feel like, you know, we feel the spirit of goodness versus evil. And even though if it's kind of fake and make believe it, it does, it does have a hindrance on, on how we work. Mm -hmm. And in terms of working on, on anything at all, just like, you talked about how important kindness is in like the way you work. What makes somebody like fun and easy to work with and just like makes that experience come to life for you? I I think where, where that comes from is is the fact that um I think that I all I think all of us are on the creative end. You know, we all like to believe that we're all creative no matter what we do in the in the industry and at different levels. And and to work collaboratively, I think is important. And I think if you can leave your ego at the door and realize that you know it really takes a team. You know, it's not just the actors that that you know make the show. It's everything that's behind the camera, everything that's in front of the camera, um, all have their equal parts in shares. And I think um, I think that's kind of a that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talking about what you've done more recently, before I like actually delve into your work and ask you questions about that, um, I heard you say that TV is more schedule driven and more on more on a time constraint. And uh, you talked a bit about the difference for you between television and movies. I know you've done a lot of television recently. Could you could you go into the, this a little bit more? And what's it like working on television versus movies? Is there one you prefer or? Absolutely, absolutely prefer movies. Absolutely prefer the prep time. You know, that's that's when when I was talking previously just about um, having the time to do research, having the time, you know, even to have a, a sofa reupholstered. You know, uh, if one film, you have the time to do that. We have you know, prep time. Usually, it's much more um, uh, regimented in the sense or, or uh, schedules ahead, and everything is timed well. Uh, television is just <laughs> television. You know. It's 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 what we do, and it's a big part of the industry now, and and that's that that you know this work is 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 schedule based, yeah. and you know every nine days you know we scout you know for new a new ser a new set uh, I'm sorry a new episode, and yeah. you know we have maybe up to a dozen and a half of new sets and more um, uh, for each episode, so we're constantly moving and we have less and less time you know, to, to really create what we want to tell the story visually, you know, and, and, and often it's not required, but, you know, there are, you know, many people in this industry that still, you know, we all have high standards and we want to do the best we can do, but we can never make up time. And I think I want to have a t-shirt that says never make, you can never make up time. Um, <laughs> you, you can do a lot of things, but you can make up time. Um, so yeah, I, I, I prefer a feature just for the fact that it's, it's, it's just usually more um, driven in the sense of uh, organize organization um, and and TV. I mean, anything can happen. You know, you pages change in the middle of the night with scripts. 
Sometimes the sets change. And again, you could do only what you could do in the matter of time, but it, it's a hustle. It's absolutely a hustle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In terms of either television or movies, over the years, have there been any objects that were especially difficult to find for a set or last minute requests that you had to grapple with? Hmm. Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Another good question. Um, there have been many. Um, anything that I can think of, I, I think, I think the most difficult thing for us is that when we have something that we need to be altered, I think the level of, of, um, altering, uh, something is, is usually the most difficult because we, it involves a vendor that maybe, ha you know, that we, we have to fabricate something, um, and change, you know, its shape or size or color or, or texture. And sometimes that's the most difficult. Um, but searching in things, I think I'm after this amount of time doing this. I think I'm pretty good, a pretty good searcher. I, I think I think I've 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 completed all the challenges, and I've never I've not been able to say I've not been able to say I can't find something. You know, <laughs> it's um, but yeah, it's it, it it's it's a fun challenge, and that's some some of the best parts of it is 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 finding objects and things that you know, you need to make work on a set, and pulling it all together. Do you recall any odd requests for a set? Um, one of the f most fun things was when we were doing um, Eternal Sunshine. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that, um, you know, some of the scenes that we had with a uh, the forced perspective scene, if you remember Jim Carrey going under the table and coming out and everything was like giant size. Yeah. Yeah, we had to you know create or recreate that stuff in a large scale so that was actually done not you know in real time it wasn't uh, in post or in in, in in ai it was uh real um and that's that's kind of tough because you're looking for things that fit you know um and that was a very creative uh, uh, things uh, actually it makes me think of another part of that movie when we were doing not on eternal sunshine but with michelle gangery we did um be kind rewind and uh, we had to recreate a uh, electric, um, basically like a power a power land with with like uh, I'm sorry I'm losing uh, my my train of thought here, but we ended up using plastic containers and 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 uh, toilet stoppers to to recreate these little electrical connections, um, and it was fun. So it was it was like it was it was like doing some fun things. Yeah, but. So cool. <laughs> I think that's a perfect transition into talking more about your work. Um, before I go into extensive questions about your work, I just want to quickly ask you, as a big fan of the Mary Tyler Moore show and Rhoda, can yeah. you tell me what it was like working on Mary and Rhoda for you? Oh, my goodness. Well, I have to say, I was a kid when that show was at when the original show or any of her shows were were uh you know i barely remember the dick van dyke show and then and then mary and, and or mary and rhoda was was you know the the you know the follow-up after her tv shows that she had on i guess in the 70s yeah. um well to say, to have those two actors together again was really interesting because um you know, I had followed them and they, and, you know, was, I, I was a big, you know, fan of that, you know, who, who thought, you know, when you're a kid, you know, you work with these, you know, two great folks that were in that and Mary, Mary Tyler Moore was, um, yeah, it was interesting. Um, you know, it, it was, it was a TV movie, so mm -hmm. it wasn't very long. Um, I was always lucky enough to work again with her on a show called New York News, mm -hmm. which was a, a barely a season. I don't think we made the season and, and she had some personal issues that they ended up knocking the season off. But um in both times it was it was neat. I mean she's a pretty special lady, you know, and, and, and she certainly had has such dignity and 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 she was great. But it was fun. Do you have any memories that stick out to you from your time working on the project? Um not particularly. I, I know that, you know, again, it was, it was TV. So it was a bit more schedule driven and you, you don't get to enjoy a lot of 
a lot of the downtime or the, the settling of having sets made, we did a lot of lo locations. So we were in and out of places pretty fast. Um, but I think uh, she, she was, uh, she was, she was pretty sweet. Yeah, nothing, nothing that stuck out too much. Mm -hmm. In terms of coming into work on something that has like already been on television, because I know, I know you did some episodes of The Equalizer and Royal Pains, and you came and you did some episodes of that, and of course you came in for this, which had already had t already had seasons before. What's it like coming into work on a project for a few episodes, or just to come in with something that's already kind of seen? stuff before like i'll go into high fidelity later which also covers that but what's that like for you um i guess you've done your homework <laughs> yeah, royal, royal pains i i came in I, I i just basically covered somebody who had gone on vacation or, or had a medical issue um and i you know i picked up where they had you know sets were all in place um you don't feel like so much that it's really part of your world you you know you kind of have to pick up quickly what they want um, and, and continue that kind of look. Um, you know, again, that show, we had a lot of locations and they had a lot of repeat locations and the sets were built. Um, we did uh, add on a few uh, uh, set rooms to one of the uh, sets while I was there. And I think it was the guest house to, to uh, uh, one of the characters. Um, yeah. um, but, you know, we, I followed along, I, you know, I got along well with the, designer and picked up on his 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 world and it, it was good but it's it's much nicer to give birth to a show yeah. from beginning to to end and and it really makes it you know kind of your baby um but you know i you don't, you don't have so much of an allegiance to that and i wasn't there very long um you know i didn't plan on staying there very long uh but that was fun on royal pains and then an equalizer which i'm on now um, you know, I joined after, uh, I think on season three and we're on season yeah. four. Um, it's also the same kind of thing. Like most of the sets were built, um, but it's a very busy, ambitious show. And we do a lot of locations and we rebuild and build a lot of sets that are called swing sets. And, and, you know, it's, it's a constant, uh, turnover of, uh, of, of sets. Um, and it's fine. You know, it's, it's TV, like, uh, you're less emotionally involved in it because it comes and goes so fast. Yeah. You know, and, and we just, you know, we all want to be together on the same page to, to create what they want. Mm -hmm. so. In terms of talking about a movie, now that you got to work on fully, um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is so beautifully done, by the way, like, so, like, the set decoration was so impactful. Um, how did you first get involved with this? project um well i got a call from the designer i have worked with in the past dan lee mm -hmm. um we've worked on projects from project to project um and basically that's how um he landed that we landed that and um and we worked together then with uh michelle gondrier on a, another show that was following i'd mentioned earlier which is be kind rewind and then, um, and I think he went off to LA to do Green Hornet or something like that. But um, so yeah, we did those two two films, and it was great. He's just um, we happened to share the same birthday, which is kind of funny, but not the same year. Um, so Michelle Gondry and I, yeah, I, it was it was just uh, it was a great creator. He's one of the most creative folks that I know, and, and you know, in the, in the industry, and and he just loves the magic of of movie making, um, and that was a lot of fun. And, and, you know, and we just started from, from the beginning, we had the prep time and we went through the script and, 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 and with Dan's genius, you know, we created uh, Eternal Sunshine. You know? I heard you talk about the scene with Jim Carrey walking through a house with sand. And there's so many different spaces throughout this movie that stand out, like the doctor's office, the different apartments we see and all the spaces and how they change during the different memory flashbacks we see. Um, and this movie uses surrealism in such a cool way. Can you tell me a bit more about what that was like for you? Well, it was actually, the fun part is, is right, we got to do that as opposed to anyone in post and anyone in the AI world, uh, except yeah. that of course they had their hand on some of it. Um, <laughs> uh, filling a house with sand was was quite a task. 
um, with, you know, people coming in and out and, and having the homeowner allow us to do that. And, and the way it was lit at the need shooting it at night, you know, it was, it was just super cool. It was, you know, it was, it was like playing in a sandbox, you know, I mean, being a kid again and enjoying such fun things. And then when they brought the set into the, into the, the wake of the shoreline, yeah. um, I mean, that too was just incredible. You know, it was people standing by making sure that it doesn't, you know, get crashed and float away. And, <laughs> and the actors having that great, you know, ability to, um, to act under those, the crashing waves, because every wave that comes in, you know, it could be larger than the next. Yeah. So it, it was, um, it was, it was truly done. And, and that was really done in Montauk, you know, it, on the, in the ocean front there. And, and it was, it was, it was quite amazing. The, um, I remember the, uh, the bookstore. Um, yeah, that was basically, that was pretty cool. Um, we, we sort of did that halfway with, um, uh, removing books and then having it, you know, uh, shot in a different timeline and, and then and disappearing all that in, in post, but um, it was it was cool. It was really great. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we had to do in the surrealism world was just, um, you know, it was half it was half half real and half us, and you know, half you know, it was it was cool, cool stuff. It was cool. Yeah. Looking back, do you have any favorite spaces that that stick out to you that you really really enjoyed while creating this movie? I think I think the most favorite was um, probably the kitchen. Yeah, I just love that set because I remember it was hard to believe even while we were doing that how Michelle Gondry was going to film that, and I remember he took a piece of cardboard and he put up a piece of cardboard on a grip stand and he put a little hole in it and he said, "Look through this," and and you could see exactly what he was he wanted to see through his lens, and it just brought us into that neat world and it was very you know very like hands-on I think that was probably the favorite and of yeah. course the beach thing that was just yeah it was like insane you know so, yeah both inside the house and out I know it's crazy just like I that's that's the reason that I initially reached out to you was because I was like that the set decoration was what made that movie the coolest that it could be and I just yeah, I just thought it was so well done. Um, and what is it like to to watch the final product of something? Like, what was it like to watch that after you finished working on it? Well, the editors, of course, you know they make they make magic out of all that world. Um, yeah, it's it it, it was it kind of takes your breath away. I mean, a movie like that, you know, you, you know, one's very proud of because you just see it put together, and it's like, wow. Now, you know, sometimes it's like, sometimes you don't get it. It's like, okay, now I get it, you know, but yeah, it works really well together, you know, when you put it all, all together as some scenes were shot, like, like I said, with, with, um, in such a way that, you know, and how they piece together, because there's a lot of dream sequences and stuff. And yeah. even though you read the script and understand it, once you see it together, it, it really pulls it together. And he is such a great vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any funny stories or memories that you remember from your time working on this movie? Hmm. God, they were all they were all great. I mean, you know, we we traveled between you know New York and and the East End quite a bit. That was just fun, and and the sets were fun, and uh, yeah, I I nothing that comes to mind other than what I I explained I told you about the. The kitchen and all that stuff was pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty good stuff. Just so cool. Um, moving on to some television you've worked on. Um, just what I was mentioning earlier about coming in and working on a project that's already sort of had a life before, talking about high fidelity, what was it like coming in on a project that reimagines a previous, like the 2000 High Fidelity movie, like how much inspiration did you take from the movie? What was that like for you? Um, yeah, it's interesting because as you know, the two character leads, you know, one was the first original movie was the male lead, you know, he was male. And, yeah. then, and then the second was female. Mm -hmm. And the, they, it, it's a little difficult because sometimes if it's explained, so much or not so much as to um how 
they wanted to recreate. I think if I recall, I believe we had a producer that was from the original movie. So yeah. there's a lot of things that we wanted, they wanted to do that were parallel, yeah. uh, but they wanted to bring it to date, like up to date and, and do a New York version of that, you know, like kind of, you know, more up to date than what it was before. And, um, it was it was neat because you know we did have the research on that, um, but we made it its own. You know we 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 brought it to a, you know a different level. I think we stepped it up a bit, you know. Yeah. And I know the way it was written and the way they had those scenes walking through the streets. It was it really had a really special feel to that to that show that really was interesting. You know where I found the movie to be just equally great, but in a different way. You know, yeah. and, and many people love the movie and it's just too bad people, a lot of people didn't see the, the TV series, mm -hmm. you know, because it wasn't very long lived. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was nice to, nice to be in the in the real world of, of exactly where we're shooting and shooting it where they say they are and, yeah. and, and having a lot of influences in the neighborhoods and, 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 and enhancing that and then recreating those sets um, that were uh, pretty cool. They were a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you about some spaces. Uh, Robin's apartment, and then you have um, Championship Vinyl and those. What were those spaces like for you to create? Like, how did you approach those? Um, well, let's see. Zoe's character, right? She owned, she owned the record store. Um, that was a built set. And um, we basically had to, like, you know, hoof it and find albums and albums and albums and albums. <laughs> You know, and, and bring all that stuff in. It's not as easy as you'd imagine, um, but um, it was it was fun. And, and, and I have a memory of having going to music stores that it, when they used to sell albums, and we we sort of had a, a template to, in which to work with, um, and that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, the, the challenge also is that we you know we had to build these these um, album boxes or these these kiosks that rolled around because of course the camera can't get around that unless they're moving. Um, so, you know, and albums are pretty heavy. So all that whole, that whole uh, set was pretty much on wheels. And as the camera needed to be in one place or another, the whole place just shifted around like, like, a, like, like the old Chinese, uh, the, like that little puzzle that you played as a kid, you know, everything moved around. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that was, uh, that was fun. And then uh, doing the set, uh, her apartment and her place was really cool and we tried to you know make it as real as, as as life is in that part of town where they have um you know the old you know the old steam risers and in all that you know it was it was quite good uh, and fun and the, you know the scenic work on that with with you know chipped and aged paint and all that stuff was I thought was very successful and it was fun it's fun to find the old sinks and old, 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 and, and old um, radiators and, and and furniture that fits into that world and her mix of life, you know, at home listening to her albums and yeah. her music influence. Yeah, Zoe Kravitz was was great in that in that role. Mm -hmm. Did you have any favorite spaces or favorite pieces? You just mentioned finding older stuff was cool for you. To, uh, to, that you that you really enjoyed while working on this. I think I think a lot of the furniture was pretty neat. You know, just some of the eclectic pieces of furniture that you know you you just find haphazardly. You know, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing that really stands out. But 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 all of it is sort of equally fun. You know, I enjoy all of it equally. Mm -hmm. Another television show to cover is for Hawkeye. It says on IMDb you worked on the New York unit for this show. How did you get involved with this project? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the calls come out of, you know, I was in uh, Atlanta at the time. And I think um, I was coming back from a show in Mo from Monarch and uh, I forget how I got the call, but um, I just think it was a, about availability. I think I was available at the time. And what they did is they did a lot of um, like block shooting and they, 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 they did a lot of their series pieces. Um, uh, they shot it all together and then spread it out through a series, you know, through, I guess, eight, eight or so series or episodes. Um, and that's basically, uh, it was fun. It was, you know, 
a well-oiled machine. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. They came into town and, and they, they, you know, they, they had an agenda and they, and a schedule and they stuck to it. And it was fun. You know, there was a lot of Christmas involved in that, in those, in those, uh, scenes and yeah, it, it was fun. It was fun because we do do a lot of street things and sometimes that's nice in the challenge of having to not fight, but work within, you know, the traffic and the noise and, and the people mm -hmm. at work. I know that, that Hawkeye mostly takes place in New York and I could be wrong, but it, it also says on IMDb that you also did some stuff in New York on Cruel Intentions. And I've also heard you just speak about the fact that New York kind of just speaks for itself in general as like a place. What's it like working on a project that takes place in New York? And like, like what's that like for you? Um, well, having lived here most of my life, um, yeah, I mean, it brings an energy that's the backdrop that really creates the mood and the feeling and it. And it brings the energy to, to all the creative elements and folks on, the, on, on a project. And, you know, they, they usually thrive from that, you know, and it's, you can't make that up, you know, you can't really do that in the back lot so much. Um, but um, that's why New York is a great location, you know, you know, uh, companies come here to work and, and, and it, even if it's a dialogue on a street, you know, you can't, you, you can't make it up, you know, and having all that great background and that texture of life and lights and, and sounds. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, it can be a challenge for the sound department more than us. Yeah. But we, um, but yeah, it, it, it's fun. You know, it's, it's something that I've always done. So it's, it's, it's not too new to me, but it's, yeah. it's certainly, um, I'm used to it, but it works well. And, and yeah, I, I cruel intentions. Um, yeah, that was a fun, that was a fun show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was a while. That was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. What was that like for you? Do you remember anything about that? <laughs> Not, not really, not, so, <laughs> not really, not so much, mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. yeah. In terms of other locations, aside from New York, um, I also love New York. My dad grew up in New York. Um, are there any other locations that you really enjoy shooting in or locations that you enjoy things taking place in? I know that things that are shot like that take place in certain places aren't always actually filmed there. So are there any locations that stick out to you from your years? Oh, absolutely. I think during the nineties, I spent almost um, every year in Jamaica, West Indies. Mm -hmm. And um, we did legends of the fall in part down there. And I was on that leg of the movie. And um, yeah, to answer your question is the yeah, Jamaica played as uh New Guinea, um, an African safari, and all the, a lot of the boat scenes were shot in the in, down in Jamaica, West Indies, and some of the sets that we built were inside the the ship, uh, were sets in Jamaica. Um, working down there was just a pleasure. I mean, I had a great time. I did a couple of periods of films down there, and contemporary stuff, and you know, as difficult as it is, is to acquire all the dressing and and decoration we need. It was just you know, they were all features and they were a lot uh, a lot easier to have that time and find all the things we need, you know, but it, it was a lot of fun. Great, great, great time with, with creating stuff, you know, from the beach to old, creating old great houses on it, on um, the wide Sargasso Sea and turning abandoned great houses into functioning homes was, was, was a great, great amount of fun. Um, and work, but we had a great time. They think kind of, you know, keeps you, keeps you at a, at a, at a slower pace. You yeah. Know? Um, but, but it, it worked, it worked really well. Mm -hmm. All of that was quite good. You talked about taking chance. We talked about that. Are there any other projects? I mean, you have such a long list. I, I wish I could cover every single thing. Are there any other projects that stick out to you looking back over the years that that really meant a lot to you or that you're really proud of? Well, um, yeah, I think, I mean, definitely my mind is flying through, you know, to Bulgaria. I mean, shooting, uh, I think the code, the working title was with Morgan Freeman and Antonio Banderas. And we, you know, we basically created New York in Bulgaria. 
Um, and they did a few exteriors in the city in New York and the rest of the sets were built there. That was, that was fun. Um, and, and proud of, cause it was a challenge to, to work with designers and, uh, and art directors from all over the world and, you know, and, and having to depict New York, um, or the United States for that matter. And things that are different, like the height of a, a doorknob, you know, or the yeah. placement of a, uh, electrical outlet or a type of refrigerator, you know, everything is very different there. Yeah. So, you know, I had a couple of people working on in New York and they were shipping uh, New York items over in a container like once or twice a week. And we would, you know, we were filling up containers to bring things to that world. Um, that was a lot of fun. And, 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 uh, and the achievement was, is that we did it. You know, the achievement was, is that we conquered that. And, and that's something that, you know, you fall back on and realize it's, uh, it's quite good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, 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 that's uh, probably my furthest, uh, my furthest adventure <laughs> on, on a job. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. You know, in terms of what you just said about like creating different places in, in, in different locations than you're in, how do you sort of go about, I know you have to like, source stuff locally from what i've talked about from other set decorators the, the sourcing stuff locally and finding stuff last minute when you need stuff and maybe an area you're not familiar with what's that like for you um good question it's sometimes some of our resources that we have that are in new york or los angeles you know we still take with us so to speak you know like fedex and is amazing and, you know, yeah and you know you can get things sometimes faster from another city sent overnight than you can if you went to the next town uh from wherever you are um some of the fun parts that i remember of of like the white sargasso sea you know we were doing uh, a period you know early 1800s and a lot of the furniture you know people had in their homes some in storage and and getting and asking them to borrow or, or loan their pieces to us was pretty amazing. Um, and that's how we would source, you know, in, in, you know, out of the United States or different areas, uh, we would source uh, uh, through local people and, and we'd always have local contacts to, to, to get us around and take us around. And there's always a sense of, of, um, um, of vendor uh, knowledge of, from different people. Um, yeah. but it, it, it works. I mean, most people are pretty gracious, you know, and they hear the, the industry, they, they like to work with us and they know, you know, we don't want to spend money with them. And so everyone's sort of open to that. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's been only, it's been challenging now since COVID, you know, that mm -hmm. we actually, you know, have lost a lot of vendors and vendors have moved away or not, you know, re rebooted themselves. And that's been a challenge that we're learning even, even at this day. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, it's almost more difficult now than, than it was before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask, how did the pandemic change things for you? Well, um, I continued to work. Um, we we were shut down just a little bit. You know, we I was on a show called God Friend and Me. Mm -hmm. from, yeah. uh, CBS, and and it was, it was really a show that was doing really well. And for whatever reason, they, they ended up pulling the plug during COVID. We had finished it like a half an episode left and then they decided to, to end it. So I came back on the wrap to finish it out. And then, and then I was right away starting on another pilot or project. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, uh, it kept us busy through that time, but yeah, we, our exposure to, to all of the uh, resources were very limited. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and not, you know, and we didn't have a lot of hands-on and group meetings and, uh, collecting furniture and they couldn't have deliveries. We had to deliver it at a neutral area and pick up at a neutral area and people, you know, didn't want to be exposed. Um, and the studios had their mandates. Yeah. So it, it was tough. Um, we did have a little bit more time on that, but it was, it was a challenge, not, uh, not a challenge. I want to have to do again that's for sure yeah <laughs>
more of a fun question for you. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> going back in time, is there any film or television show that you wish you could have worked on? Maybe something you watched as a kid or, or something that you watched recently, anything like that. Anything that you're like, oh, that would have been so much fun to work on. I would have loved to work on any of the Harry Potter projects. Yeah. Any of them. All of them were great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think all of those sets were amazing and all of that, you know, that's a perfect area of, of finding great things and, and, and altering them and, and, and you know, creating such a, a very unique look. I think that's, that's the first thing that came to my mind. That'd be a lot of fun. Going back to what you said about the way that you ingest media and like critique things when you're watching stuff alone, what in your mind makes a good set decoration? Like when, when, like when you're watching something and you find something you really like, what in your mind like makes that really good for you if that makes sense um personally i like things like um like harry potter where it's it's really fantasy and and real heavy heavy um stylizing in, into a project um where things aren't quite real but they're over the top with with a certain look um i think that that probably like the harry potter series and all that I think is one of them, you know, even the Vikings and, and stuff that's heavy period where there are pieces that maybe never were real in its time or if it was based on any kind of period of reality. But uh, the, the, the things that were made up were just pro probably really cool. I think that's really a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then nothing like I'm, I mean, it's nice to work on shows that, you know, you know, you want to do luxurious draperies and luxurious fabrics on sofas and stuff like that. But that's, you know, that's, that's, it's kind of easy in a way, you know, it's, 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 you're, you're pleasing a palette instead of really creating anything more, but it's, 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 it's fun. It's all great. Mm -hmm. All fun. Some more concluding questions for you here. Um, one of my favorite questions I ask this to everyone I interview and that's, um, if you could give your past self a piece of advice, what would it be? Hmm. Past self a piece of advice. Well, pertaining to the industry, of anything, course. Anything you want, really. I would say absolutely follow your heart, follow your dreams. Try to create a great balance because family is important. Yeah. And and this industry has its a, 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 an ability to kind of grab a lot of your time, mm -hmm. and if you could balance it well, and people will respect you more, and understand that, and you won't lose anything. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's sort of it in a nutshell. But have fun doing it along the way, you know, and hopefully you can find a, something that one one does that's it's it's just you know, it's just you you want to go to work not to be work but something that you truly enjoy. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think looking back, um, I think I followed that path quite a bit, but got deterred a lot. But <laughs> but I think uh, I would tell myself to stick to the to stick to the path. Mm -hmm. Just you know, just follow it. Yeah, that's it. Similarly, if you could give anyone who aspires to go into the industry, either set decoration or just in general, if you could give them a piece of advice, what would you say? Um, I would say do your homework in the sense, you know, learn as much as you can, um, whatever that world is, try to try to work um, from your way from the bottom up. Yeah, you, can, you have much more experience and you'll last a lot longer. And then just learn and listen and try to try to try to hook up and hook in with the best uh, mentors, um, because that's really that'll that'll create and keep that longevity. Otherwise, you know, you want to, you know, you just want a good teacher, you mm -hmm. know, and just, and just stick with it and don't give up. You know, you, you have a lot of down days, you have a lot of great days and you have to remember the great days. And, and it's, it's, it's like rolling the dice, you know, you'll get that lucky number seven, you know, and mm -hmm. when you have that, you have to hold on to it and just remember what that's like and then just keep going, mm -hmm. you know, try to focus on that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, th I, I think endurance is, is important. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. I don't know if there's anything that you can tell us about any projects you're currently working on or anything you have coming up. Is there anything you can tell us? 
Well, I'm just currently working on the equalizer. Um, we're ending our fourth season um, in about two months time. And um, I have no projects on the on the horizon, but after the strike and everything that happened with all that, and you know, it's a little bit of a different world, but it'll all happen. Everybody wants to watch, you know, the television and the big screen, mm -hmm. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and also watch their little screens. <laughs> you know, the phone. <laughs> little phones, little iPads, <laughs> all that. So, yeah. yeah, a lot of content out there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for answering all my questions. It was a real honor to talk to you. You're very welcome, Olivia. Good luck.